Uh, some some designers have been doing this for a long time and, and they get everything perfect every time. Fantastic. Um, if you're a younger designer, you know, it's very easy to miss some data. So Gerber just isn't up to the mark uh, for that, especially if you're doing any sort of complex uh, designs. For example, if you have something with multiple drill files, in inevitably, we see customers forgetting to include a drill file or, you know, there's something, some issue with the drill files because uh, there's not just one drill, drill file. And then definitely there's no intelligence to Gerber. So you'd have to include information like, you know, layer ordering and, uh, you know, any, any kind of special, like, Hey, what is this file for? Because we don't know. Right. So, you have to really go into detail. So it's like adding the metadata on top of the Gerber in a separate in a separate file. So it's it ends up being very error prone. So one of the things, yeah, sir. go ahead. No, so please. actually, one of the comments also I'd like to make is twenty five years of playing on the other side. Um, this is Patrick Davis, by the way. My apologies. One of the things of 25 years of being in the field is everybody does this is as you're going ahead and processing out and you think, oh, shoot, I got to change one thing on this silk layer or one thing on this negative plane. I'll just slip that in by end up having individual files. How many times have you guys been uh, uh, stung by putting it together, shipping it back out? And then, again, oh, wait a minute, you put this one file in, but you don't have the flash on it or you, the drill is actually moved and everything. By having a single file format where you have one file that gets put out every single time, you know that everything is going to be in sync, and that's extremely important. That's the biggest difference between I-2581 and Gerber. Plus, the intelligence is another huge part of it because you don't rely, and uh, Amit can uh, comment on this, is you're, you've got the CAM operators sitting there, and they've got to bring in the IPC, um, uh, the uh, 356 netlist, and actually do an overlay, and there's always... You're guessing a little bit, and every single time you're doing this, yeah, oh, we're doing thousands and thousands of these guessed, but with IPC 2581, there is no guessing. It just makes it work really, really well. So I don't know why people, I know why people still do Gerber because you've always done it. I think it's something you're trying to think about doing IPC 2581 instead. It just makes your life easier. Absolutely. Uh, well said, well said for sure. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of, you know, how things are done today um, is, you know, not so good, uh, but, you know, I'm going to go through it so people can kind of see what's going on. So whenever we get Gerber, um, we do have to, you know, import that into, um, in our case, we're using um, front frontline Genesis system uh, where we run all, all of our DFMs. And so we have to go through the input module for that tool. And the input module is absolutely, you know, guessing as to what file is what. And so then we have to, you know, manually make sure that, yeah, this is, this looks right. And, and there can be some, you know, file format issues and, you know, all that. So this is how we go through it today. Um, very error prone and, and very, um, very manual. So one of the things when you go back to that previous slide sure. is you can take a look over here at the path names. You notice that every single um, CAD software has a different way of outputting everything. And it literally, and, and then of course, every single company ended up putting different suffixes onto it. So the CAM operator is bringing this in and it's like, well, what the devil's going where? By using the 2581, we actually eliminate, we actually have a way of telling you exactly what layer is for what. And we'll get into that when Vince goes through our process at the very end here. So it becomes very easy and there's no more interpreting data. Again, that, that the biggest difference between the Gerber and between 2581 is you're not asking the CAM operator to actually think about, hey, what does he really mean by this? It's very simple. No, this is exactly what it means. Yeah, no, perfect. And Lucy, are we doing a, is Sierra doing a stack of demo? Yes, uh, Vandana and Damodar are here. They're going to show you how to run the stack of designer and how to export the files uh, with IPC 2581. Okay, okay, great. So just a little setup here is that 
you know, Sierra is not a CAD tools provider, uh, but we have worked hard on the stack up tool. And that one portion can be outputted as a 2581 uh, format. So I'll stop sharing and let, let the design team share that. Hi, everyone. Um, our PCB stackup designer tool provides manufacturable and cost optimized stackups and also includes an impedance calculator. The tool allows you to change the signal plane combination and the copper weights in the generated stackup. It also allows you to download the stackup data in IPC standard 258 form. We start by entering the project name. Project name, for example, demo or revision number, the PCB size, a target PCB thickness, PCB material and a PCB type. You can also use the material selector compare guide here to choose your materials. Click on this option one if you know the number of layers required in the design or on option two if you have a complex BGA that dictates the uh, layers in your design. Uh, choose the layer count, a signal plane layer combination and click on run stack up designer. You will be presented with a list of Sierra circuits recommended stack ups. Uh, and some basic stack up for information. Click on the report button here to view the final stack up that resembles your final build up. Here on the report page, you can view the attributes without going back to the previous page. And if you do any changes here in the board properties, you can click on generate custom stack up to update. Scroll further for a detailed construction of the stack up. Here you can change the layer type from signal to plain or mixed, and the copper percentage will be automatically adjusted. You can click on this cross symbol to remove the solder mask. Scroll further for the inbuilt impedance calculator. Uh, this calculator here allows you to add controlled impedance and compute the trace width and trace spacing for a target impedance. Click on this plus sign here. And for a signal layer in target impedance, you can add in the model type, select a reference layer and click on calculate. You can see that the trace width is calculated here. Uh, click on the save button here. Um, to save the stack up data in uh, IPC standard 2581. Uh, clicking on this button generates an ID that allows you to access the stack up in the next login sessions. If you click on this export to IPC 2581, the stack up data is imported in a .xml file, which can be implemented to any ECAT tool which supports IPC 2581. Uh, we have Damodar here now, who will show you how to view these files in KDs. Over to you, Damodar. Thank you, Vandana. Hello, everyone. I'm going to show you how to import stack up data into Allegro tool using IPC 2581. After exporting the IPC file the, from the stack up tool, the format will be XML format. To import the file into the tool, open the tool, go to setup, cross section, Go to import, select IPC 2581, say yes. Go to your location, select the file, say open. Once imported, there will be a report generated to cross check the data. This will save time when you having multi-layer boards and also don't have to add details manually. Thank you. This is great. I love how you guys have this capability inside of uh, Sierra Circuits and being able to bring your own net list, uh, bring your own stack ups and play with it. As all of you know, you get five, six, seven, eight stack ups um, every single design. Sometimes you get one stack up if you're really lucky. And how many times have you actually gone in and made a mistake in the stack up? And it's just like you're copying it in and you fat finger something and you get the wrong impedance or you get the wrong um, uh, thickness or the wrong type of copper. With the 2581 data, it makes it all very, very simple. Less manual input, the better everybody is at. And then you can just file import, and then you save the files. This is a great starting point moving forward. And it makes everything easy because Sierra Circuits has this and they go, this is the stack up that we can actually do. They know where it's coming from. Um, it, it literally will save you guys a lot of time and a lot of ECO back and forth. I mean, how many people have gotten a, a message back from your uh, fab vendor going, hey, um, we can't do this. We got to make this exceptions. We got to move. We got to change the thickness on this, or we got to change the line width on this. 
in order to make your impedance callings. With Sierra, guess what? You never have to worry about that. And with the 2581, you're never going to make a mistake. File import done. Really simple. I love this. This is great, guys.